All right. This is uh, called symmetry and transformations. Symmetry and transformations. You'll we'll deal with this topic a lot in algebra, and that's the idea of transformations. And all a transformation is is the movement of a shape. So that's what goes in the blank. It's the movement. The movement of a shape to another location. That's all it is. Now, this is kind of odd, but the original shape is called the pre image. The pre image. And the transformed shape is actually called the image. You're just simply taking a shape and you're moving it to another location. That's a transformation. Right? Word associated with that is also translation. All right. When you do the image, the new shape, you do the vertices with an apostrophe. You use an apostrophe so it can be identified. Okay, so if you look at the uh, shapes there, both on the screen and in front of you, you've got a couple here. Let's start, I'm just going to focus your attention, don't circle it on your sheet, but let's start off here with triangle XYZ, right? By the way, what kind of triangle is this? Is this uh, an acute triangle, a right triangle, or an obtuse triangle? On three, I'll give you an answer again. Your choices are acute, right, or obtuse. Here we go. One, two, three. Obtuse. Anytime there's an obtuse angle, the triangle has to be obtuse. That angle right there is an obtuse angle greater than 90. Remember, one angle greater than 90 is obtuse. All right, this is the... This is the <coughs> Image or the pre-image? This is the pre-image. And you can write that in. This is the pre-image. And this pre-image has been translated or moved over to here, right? And notice now, instead of X, we have X apostrophe. Usually in words, you say X prime. Usually for an apostrophe, you say prime. So X prime, Y prime, Z prime. And this is the image. The image. If somebody takes a photograph of you, the photograph is the image. All right? It's the image. Again, you got to be careful. The, the, the original is the pre-image. The new movement image is, is the image. Now, if you notice what happens here. And I'm going to go a little higher so you guys can see a little better. I'm going to see what happened to move this shape. So I want you to watch. We have a coordinate system. I'm going to start at point X. If I go down 2, I have to go right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I hit X prime. I don't know if I would do this in your notes. It'll just make your notes all goofed up. Okay. Now let me do that from point Y. Again, I'm going to go down two, same amount, and write one, two, three, four, five. And sure enough, I'm there. And that's the case as well for point Z. I'm going to go down two, two blocks, right? And let me just catch so you understand. From here, that's down one, that's down two, two blocks. I'm going right. There's right one, two, three, four, five two down and to the right five so really what happened here was the image is translated two down and to the right five now i could also go with the horizontal first so i could say instead start at x go one two three four five to the right and two down same thing right i'm going five right and two down one, two, three, four, five right, and two down. Start at Z, 
one, two, three, four, five right, and two down, right? The image is translated five to the right and two down. Okay, a translation. So every vertex, every point is moved that exact same amount. So if I gave you something like this pre-image, right? And that's the pre-image, no apostrophes. So tell me, what do you have? Tell me, what do you have to do to move this pre-image all the way over to this location? How do you translate it? So come up with the numbers, all right? So everybody thinking. So a moment ago, I told you to get the blue triangle to move. We had to go to the right five and down two. What do you have to do to get this angle to move to be translated from its starting location in the first quadrant to its new location in the third quadrant. Do you guys know quadrant numbers? Yeah. Should have had it in sixth grade, I would think. Did you guys do anything with coordinates in the sixth grade? Earth people, any vaguely familiar coordinates? Quad one is the upper right. Quad two is the upper left. Quad three is the lower left. Quad four is the lower right. Are the quadrants of a coordinate system. All right, so what does it take to move the shape, to translate the shape? All you got to do is one of the points because they're all the same. So I'll do one of the points. So you should have said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the left and down one, two, three, four. Eight to the left and down four. And B is eight to the left and down four. A is eight to the left and down four. And C is eight to the left and down four. And this is shape is translated eight to the left and down four. Kristen. Um, since B started at a vertice, it wouldn't count the vertices until you got. What do you mean the vertices? Not vertices, yeah, um, like where I am, I mean, I am, so I'm going to start at B, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, left eight, down one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing, right? Oh, you don't count. Where you start? I don't know why students always want to do this. Okay. What is it? Uh, what's that game where it's where mother may I? May I take two giant steps? One, two. Is that how you play the game? Well, why do you want to do it when you're counting? I haven't moved yet. That's one. You haven't moved. You gotta go one, and then you go two. Right? Makes sense. Well, same thing here, right? You gotta you gotta move one before you get a one. You're not one to start. You're at zero. Move one. And you're one. All right. Hopefully, you'll remember that ridiculous illustration and never get that wrong again. But you know what? A bunch of students do it, Kristen, and it's just something mental that gets them. So, probably because they're mental. No. All right. Let's do the next thing here. It's all kinds of things we can do with our shapes. And it used to be artists would have to learn. Uh, ways of doing these mechanically and they still do do a degree um, but there's a lot of programs now that do this for us the next thought is a reflection a reflection so if you read the text there with me a reflection is when every point of the pre-image is the same distance from a line of Symmetry, S-Y-M-M-E-T-R-Y. -M -M -E Same distance from a line of symmetry as the corresponding point of the image. So, and this program is a pain, so I'm not going to pull out my ruler. But if I took my ruler out and I measured from here to here, right? And let's just say for general purposes, you know, you have 
you can do this on your paper if you have your protractor and you measure. And let's say this was three. Guess what this distance is going to be? Three. And by the way, and I would mark this, these are at right angles. Right angles. Now, is every point the same distance away? Not necessarily. Look at B. It's further. So let's suppose B is like 5 away. How far away would B prime be? 5 away, right? Do you follow? That's the idea. And the way this one is reflected. So this one, the way we did it, would also be 3. And again, these are always right angles. Right angles. Always right angles. Right angles in your reflection. And right angles in your reflection. Look at the next one. The next reflection is, is quite interesting. So if we're going to reflect this, we're going to need some kind of an aid to do it. So I've got my protractor out. And not only do I have to use a protractor, but I also have to measure. And the key is I got to be at 90 degrees. So is my protractor 90 degrees to the line of symmetry? Yes. So if you have your protractor with you, you can do this. My problem is I got to be careful because I can only draw in certain spots on my protractor. It's so much easier on an overhead. So watch, this distance from here to here, so for me I can kind of cheat because I'm on an electronic device, I need to make that same distance on this side. Now you would have to measure, you would have to measure using a ruler, I'm just going to use the fact that I can grab my shape again and I'm going to put a point right there. And guess what point this is? This is R prime, right? Because I'm working off a of point R right now. Okay, I don't need this line anymore. I just used it to figure out how far I was. So I just did point R. I'm going to do point N now. Now again, I got to stay at a 90 degree angle to the line of symmetry. And again, I'm going to use the fact that I can draw a line and then move that line. So I'm going to go from N my line of symmetry. Again, if I were at home, I would be measuring this. But I can move this line and use it as a measurement. Okay, so now I'm going to put a point here for this. That always wants to do that. Give my pen back. Put a point there. Move this out of the way. And what point is this now? N prime, right? And I'm going to do the same thing for the other two points. I'm going to move my protractor up. Again, i got to stay on that 90-degree angle. Get right down there where point O is. Again, I'm going to go from point O to the line. I would be measuring if I had a ruler and weren't on a smart board. So now I'm going to put that point there at the end so I know where it goes right at that 90 degree angle again I don't need that part and now I have point O prime whoa that was cool better go back make sure we're in the right place so this is point O prime and then I got to catch my last one that's point P and again I got to stay at a 90 degree angle catch point P That's my distance. Move it. Again, you would be measuring. All right, get rid of that. Move that off. This is, oh, I did it again. <laughs> I love working on the overhead. It's point P prime, and now I can connect the dots. And again, if I were at home, I would use my ruler to connect these dots. And if you want, you can knock yourself out and do the checker pattern, you artistic people. 
And what did I just do? I just reflected that shape about that line of symmetry. And if the, the more accurate I am, I mean to be an exact reflection. You guys know when you look in a mirror, right, your mirror image is flipped. So we've taken a mirror image and it's flipped. Uh, the Science Center in Cleveland, Ohio, they have this big mirror and they have a wall and you can go right up to the wall and half of your face sticks out and half doesn't. And the mirror takes the half of your face and makes the other half of the image with it, reflects it. So that you have double, whatever, you know, this side of your face. And of course, you know, if you have a part, then your part's on like both sides or you have no part, depending on which half is showing, right? So I don't have a part here, so I wouldn't have a part, right? So instead of having this part here, it'd be this again over here. Um, if you part your hair down the middle, then you, at least your hair would look normal. But your left side and right side aren't exactly symmetrical. All right, anyhow, the idea. And that line of symmetry can go anywhere. The key is perpendicular. Again, I just want to make sure that you guys understand that each time I used a perpendicular line. That's why I used my protractor, and that's why I went 90 degrees reflections. Now, by the way, not only did I reflect that, I also rotated it. See how it's rotated? Right? You know, the smart board makes it easy to rotate shapes. So if I grab the shape and grab the green dot on top, see I just rotated it. See how that shape is rotated? It's about to the rotation there, right? So not only is it moved, it's rotated. And that's what reflecting will do if your line of symmetry is at an angle. You'll also be able to rotate it. All right, and then the last thought here is, again, symmetry. A figure has a line of symmetry if and only if each half of the figure is the image of the other half. So I've got some shapes here for you guys to look at. The first shape right here, that's symmetric. If this is the line of symmetry, right, you got to cut it that way to get the left half to look just like the right half. If I cut it this way, is it symmetrical about that line? Does the top look exactly like the bottom? No, not symmetrical that way. The second example isn't symmetrical at all, right? It's asymmetric. Say, Mr. Scarfy, what does asymmetric mean? It means it's not symmetrical. Um, you know, different letters can be symmetrical depending upon how you slice them. Right, slice the A in this way, and the left and the right are mirror images. The E, though, you're going to have to slice that way, right? To get now the top and bottom to be mirror images. Do you understand what's happening? You're taking that, that shape on top. When you flip it down, that bottom is that mirror image of that shape. If you're not understanding, you need to ask because... Uh, symmetry and symmetrical are just concepts that we're trying to get you to understand. You know, this oval can be cut in a bunch of different ways. You can make it symmetrical that way. Doesn't the left half look like the right half? Or you can make it symmetrical this way. Doesn't the top half look like the left half? The letter H. Hey, can you do the letter H another way and make it symmetrical than the two ways they showed you? How about this way? Does that exactly cut that letter to where it's a mirror image? And you know what? It does. Right? You could also go this way. You could also slice the oval. Man, this shape, tons of lines of symmetry, right? Just make sure you go through the center. So, like, how about like this? Right? And there's tons of possibilities. The triangle, you can see a bunch. The square bunch. That yellow star shape a bunch. The heart, you're only going to go one way. Go ahead and draw the line of symmetry on the heart. 
Draw the line of symmetry on the heart. You can use pencil if you're not confident. Draw a line of symmetry on the heart. And I hope you went this way, right? That's the only way you're going to get that heart to be symmetrical. It's going right down the middle. What about the uh, right side arrow? How can you divide that to make it symmetrical? And I hope you sliced it this way, right? Right, that's the line of symmetry would be there. Makes sense. Butterfly is pretty easy. Slice up your butterfly down the line of symmetry. We're dissecting the butterfly. When biology comes, don't worry, you won't dissect butterflies because they're too little and there's not a whole lot of stuff in there. You'll do like fetal pigs or something really cool. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right. Go ahead and do the negation symbol there. How would you do your line of symmetry on that negation symbol? There's really how many ways on this one? Two. Two. So you could have gone this way. Did anybody go this way? Okay. Or you could go this way. Did anybody go this way? All right. So it's just the way you look. Did anybody do both? All right, so two possibilities on that one. All right, do my smiley face. Because he has a face, there's only one way you're going to slice him up, right? Going to slice him up. <laughs> He's so happy. <laughs> it's a lollipop. Yellow lollipop, all right. If we made lollipops like that, we'd make a million, right? No, nobody would want to eat them. All right. So look, in your, in your book, the first homework assignment there with symmetry has a bunch of shapes. And you know, a lot of these, it's not a big deal. I think the only one that's interesting is number 12. I mean, that's about the only one. Anybody want to come up and slice up 12? Come on, Christina. Slice up 12. Put a dotted line on that line of symmetry. Two ways you can go. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. Just finish. It messes with your brain, doesn't it? All right. Calibration's a little bit off. Or you could have gone this way, right? Could have gone that way. Either way, it's going to slice and dice that. What was the bottom one? I think I had something on the bottom. Did I not? Is that all I had? All right. Those are pretty simplistic. Not a big deal. Um, all right. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. I don't think you guys have a homework listed at the bottom, right? But I have homework for you. Okay. I need to give you more then, right? Because you're complaining. Is that what I need to do? That's, that's what we did at the table with our kids. If they complain like, oh, please. Okay, great. Here's here's more for you. Not a problem. We got more for you. All right. I want you to do page 540. 9 through 17. 9 through 17. 21 through 23. We're going to work on the rest tomorrow in class as we finish reviewing this chapter. Quiz on Wednesday, test on Thursday. That's part of the chapter review. We're going to start with 9 through 17, 21 to 23, and I'll continue on tomorrow in class.